My name is Nisha McCray. I'm the founder and executive director of Bachika, a nonprofit organization where we bring our students' ideas to life using STEM. In this video, you'll learn how to export a design from Tinkercad to Fusion 360. If you haven't already, it's a good idea to review the first video in this series to learn about the steps we follow to brainstorm and start creating a 3D design in Tinkercad. The project we're focusing on is a helmet design for my student Calvin's little brother, Ezekiel. Previously, we used Tinkercad to create a design based on a few simple shapes, like a half sphere, cylinders, and rectangles to test out our helmet concept. We found out that Ezekiel's favorite colors are black and purple, so we were sure to include those colors in our design as well as a few tweaks. Using Fusion 360 to further work on the helmet design that we started in Tinkercad will allow us to use advanced shapes as well as refine a number of features on our model. Let's get started. First, we need to export our CAD model from Tinkercad to Fusion 360. Fortunately, there is a button for that. To export a Tinkercad file, first, we need to make sure that all our parts are selected. Then, we can select the Send To button at the top right of the screen, and voila! Our model is ready to export. Now that we have our model open in Fusion 360, we're ready to go. First, let's explore some basics of our new design environment. First, the data panel shows our data. It can also hide our data if it's overwhelming our workspace. The view cube controls the camera view on your CAD model in Fusion 360, just like in Tinkercad. Our imported files include CAD models like a Tinkercad designed helmet. Next, the application bar. Similar to word processing software, like Microsoft Word and Google Docs, here you'll find the file menu, as well as the save, undo, and redo functions. The new design button let us create a new design. Finally, you can view your account and sign out in the My Profile area. It's quite similar to Tinkercad, actually. Next, let's explore the toolbar. In contrast to Tinkercad, where all of your tools fit on a single toolbar above your work plane, Fusion 360 has an enormous number of tools. To make it easier to organize your work, Fusion 360 offers various workspaces. Just like in real life, it's easier to find a tool like a spatula in a kitchen workspace than a garage workspace. We can access these various workspaces by using the Workspace Picker. Now, let's explore the browser. This is where any objects in your CAD model or assembly will be listed. This lets you keep track as well as control objects in your assembly. Before going any further, you are probably wondering, what is an assembly? No worries. Let's go over a few common terms that you'll need to use Fusion 360. Assembly, components, and bodies. An assembly has one or more components. A component has one or more bodies. A body is a continuous 3D object. To clarify, let's take a bike. A bike would be an assembly as it is made of various components, such as a handlebar, a seat, and a pair of wheels. However, a bike component like a wheel can be broken down further into several bodies, including a tire, spokes, nuts, bolts, and more. Each of those bike components would be a single movable component composed of a single stationary body. Breaking this back to Fusion 360, anything that moves independently in your design should be its own component. For example, in our helmet design file, our assembly is our helmet, which is composed of several components, including a top cap, face guard, mount, etc. In turn, each of those components is made up of one or more bodies or continuous 3D objects we created using Tinkercad. Why does this matter? Well, if we look at our browser, We'll see why it's important to know the difference. When we imported our Helmet CAD model, several components were already created. The top level file is the assembly containing all of the components. In addition, if we glance at the browser once more, we'll also notice the bodies drop down menu under each component. This area lists any bodies associated with a particular component of our assembly. Now that we've explored the browser, let's explore one final tool. While the browser allows us to keep track of components and bodies we've created on our canvas, the timeline allows us to keep track of each step we've made in our design process. Any operation performed on our design will be listed here. If down the line we desire to make any additional changes, we can do so here. 
Now you can navigate your way around Fusion 360. Let's get started bringing our helmet design to life.